Hey, my dear data friends, it's Nikola from Data Motor. Welcome to another video in the DP700 Fabric Data Engineer uh, Learning Series. What's the difference between a good data pipeline and a great one? Efficiency and reliability. A great pipeline doesn't waste time or resources on data that's already been processed. In this video, you will learn the professional technique to achieve this incremental loading. We'll walk through the entire process from setting up watermarking to building a dynamic pipeline in Microsoft Fabric that can turn hours of processing time into minutes. Stay tuned. I'm in the Fabric workspace and as you may see, I have created two items, a warehouse called dvh underscore dp700 and the lake house lh underscore dp700. Our source data will be stored in the warehouse and we need to have it incrementally loaded into a lake house. So let's jump straight into building our solution. The first step is to create a table that will serve as a source table. In the warehouse, I'll open a new SQL query window and create a table called my data source. As you can spot, we're inserting a few dummy values here for the person ID, name and the last modified time. Let's execute this script and once I refresh the tables node in the warehouse explorer, our table is here. This is how the data looks in the preview window. Next, we need to create a special table that will hold the information about the watermark value. Watermark value stores the value when we loaded our data for the last time. I'll provide the name of our source table and the dummy value in the past, which is used only for the initial data load. After the initial load, we are going to update this value each and every time the incremental load is completed. In the next step, I'll create a store procedure, USP underscore write watermark that encapsulates the logic for updating the watermark value in the watermark table. We have two parameters, last modified time and table name. We are now ready to move to a destination, which is Fabric Lake House. I'll open a new tab so that it's easier to switch between the items later. Let's start building our pipeline. I'll click on the new item and then select data pipeline. Let's give it a proper name, something like incremental demo. Okay, the first step is to add the lookup activity to the pipeline canvas. The goal of this activity is to capture the current value in the watermark table. So in the settings tab of the activity, I'll set my warehouse as a connection. Then find my watermark table and leave the first row only option checked. Let's now add another lookup activity. This one will capture the new value of the watermark from the source table. Since we need the last modified date, we will use the max function to extract the maximum value in the column. Again, the warehouse is the same as in the previous activity, but this time we will write our own T-SQL query to retrieve the value. Great, now we have both the previous and the new watermark values. Now we have to leverage this logic upstream in the next activity. I'll use a copy date activity, which represents the most straightforward way to move the data from the source to a destination. I'll first rename it to copy underscore incremental and then configure the flow between the lookup activities and the copy date activity. This is done by connecting activities with arrows. There are multiple options for connecting activities. In this example, I'll be using a green arrow, which means when the previous activity is successfully completed, proceed to execute the next activity in the pipeline. Now we need to configure the source and destination for the copy date activity. In the source tab, I'll use the query that dynamically checks the output value of the lookup activities and return only those records where the watermark value is greater than the value outputted by the old watermark activity and lower than or equal to the value outputted by the new watermark activity. Let's now configure the destination properties. Remember, we are incrementally loading the data into a lake house, so I'll set my LH underscore DP700 lake house 
as a connection. Next, I'll choose the file series of the lakehouse as a root folder for storing the output and specify the file path by browsing for the DP700 incremental folder and then dynamically setting the file name by using the concat function. As a final step, we need to update the watermark value in our watermark table and we will leverage the store procedure we previously created. Hence, I'll add a store procedure activity to a pipeline and rename it to sp underscore write watermark. Let's connect the previous copy date activity with the store procedure activity and now configure the store procedure activity by providing the name of the store procedure that needs to be executed. We will import parameters from the procedure and then configure parameter values by defining data types and providing the output values from the previous activities. So we are taking the new watermark value from the lookup activity and passing that value as a parameter to our store procedure. Similarly, we will take the table name value from the old watermark lookup activity. We are now ready to run our pipeline, so I'll hit run and let's see what happens. You can monitor the pipeline execution directly below the pipeline canvas. Great, the run was successful. Let's go to our lakehouse and check the content of the DP700 incremental folder. Here is the txt file containing all the data from our source table. This was an initial data loading and it obviously returned the expected result. Ok, let's now go back to our data source and insert new records into our source table. I'll insert two new records, incremental John and incremental Mary. As you may notice, these two records are now part of the source table. I'll now run the pipeline again and what I expect to see is the new file generated in the DP700 incremental folder which should contain only these two newly created records. Ok, the pipeline ran successfully, let's jump into our lake house and check the outcome. First, we have a new file generated by the pipeline. Let me see the data preview. Awesome, we have only records that were inserted after the initial load, which means that our incremental loading logic works perfectly. The last thing I want to check is the watermark value, so that we can be sure that when the next time pipeline runs, it will pick only those records that were inserted after the previous loading process. Looks good, our watermark value has been updated to the one that represents the current maximum value in the target table. And there you have it, we've successfully built a complete dynamic incremental pipeline from scratch. The key to mastering this is practice, so I encourage you to find a full load pipeline in your own environment and try converting it into incremental load approach. Thanks for watching this guide on DP700 Mastering Exam and looking forward to see you soon in the next one. If you like this video, make sure to click this like button down below. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the latest features and enhancements in Microsoft Fabric and Power BI, make sure to subscribe to Data Mozart YouTube channel. See you soon!